Good afternoon. I am Junri Anthony M. Rimolio from the Department of Agronomy and Plant Breeding, College of Agriculture, Central Mindanao University. So this video is intentionally made for the purpose of answering some frequently asked questions from my students in CPSI 41 laboratory. So exercise number three is entitled as photosynthesis and crop yield. The first frequently asked question is, is it necessary for us to do field experiment or shall we switch to pot experiment? Which is which? So to answer your question, it depends on your location. So if you are living in a subdivision wherein most of your area is concrete, so you, you can switch to pot experiment. However, if there are vacant spaces or parcel of land you know, near your house, then field experiment is much better. So in order for you to have a concrete knowledge and understanding, please read the entire exercise. The second frequently asked question is, Sir, how many seeds will I plant in each pot or in each experimental plot? So it depends on the available planting material you have. But for the purpose of this exercise, to make it simple and uniform, you need at least 10 assigned in each pot or in each experimental plot in a total of 12. Because in this exercise, you are only required to have 12 experimental plots. Because you are asked to formulate 4 treatments including the control with three blocks. So, four treatments multiplied by three blocks is equal to 12. The second frequently asked question is, Sir, how many seeds will I plant in each pot or in each plot? So, it largely depends on the available planting materials you have. But for the purpose of this exercise, you are to assign 10 seeds per pot or plot in a total of 120 seeds since you are required to have 12 experimental plots for this experiment. What matters most is that there is a uniform number of seeds assigned in each pot or in each plot to avoid variation that might disrupt the validity of our experimental research. The third frequently asked question is, Sir, is it really necessary to have 7 inches rim diameter of the pots? I'd like to remind you all that 7 inches is the minimum space requirement for every pot experiment because we also make sure that we provide optimum growth and development of our experimental crops. It doesn't matter if you have 7 or more than 7 inches rim diameter as long as all your pots are of uniform size. The fourth frequently asked question is, Sir, what are the crops we need to use for this experiment? So first and foremost, Please read the entire exercise number 3 because it was clearly stated there that we need to use early maturing crops. So one of the examples stated there is pechay or mungbin. But if you want to make your life easier, then I suggest you would choose mungbin because it is direct seeded compared to pechay wherein it is transplanted and you still need to do pre-planting treatment. At my back is the sample layout designed for this experiment. So exercise number three is laid out in a randomized complete block design with four treatments replicated thrice. So I'm gonna show you and explain to you how this layout works. 
So in a particular RCBD design, one of its attributes is that it has blocks. So the purpose of blocks is to minimize variation within and maximize variation among blocks. And according to your experiment, each block is divided into four blocks. That is why we have a total of 12 blocks. Referring in this layout, experimental plots are assigned by this number and the letters represent the treatments. So there are four treatments for this exercise. And as you observe, the treatments are randomized in each block. Randomization is very important in every experimental research to avoid bias or making your treatments favored or handicapped. So, the sample treatments where you impose to your crops, you know, experimental crops, are the following. So, you may assign A for the control, meaning you do the usual cultural management practices of a particular crops and you need to research it in the internet. What are the cultural management practices of your crops to be studied? And then, letter B is you may opt to use a kind of organic fertilizer. So, say for example, uh, chicken dung. And you also assign C or another organic fertilizer. So, for example, guano and all. And the fourth uh, treatment is the inorganic fertilizer. So, since we cannot be able to do soil analysis, so for, the, for this exercise, you may opt to use complete 1414. You might be wondering as to the arrangement of the blocks. So, it depends on the gradients present in a particular area. And according to statistics, the arrangement of your blocks depend on the gradient. And it must be perpendicular to the gradient from highest to lowest concentration. Let's move on to the data to be gathered. So, referring to your workbook, so there are seven data to be gathered for this experiment. So, first is days to emergence. So, this will be obtained by counting the number of days from planting until 50% of your crops emerge, no? particularly the seedlings. So, say for example, in Mungbin. So you will count the number of days no, from planting until it, each pot, 50% of it already emerge. So usually in the case of Mungbin, it starts to emerge around two days. For the percent germination, this will be computed using this formula. So, percent germination equals the number of seeds germinated divided by the total number of seeds sown times 100. So, say for example, in each pot, you planted 10 seeds. So, if there are only 8 seeds germinated over 10 seeds sown, so 8 divided by 10 times 100 equals 80%. So you need to measure its percent germination in each plot. Next is days to flower. So this will be taken when 50% of the plants bear flowers. So your counting is somewhat a sequel or a continuation of your data gathering for the days to emergence. From the date of planting until 50% of the plants 
bear flowers. And for the plant height, this will be gathered at two weeks interval starting at two after sowing using a ruler or meter sticks. Meter stick. So, from the date of planting, you, you can now start measuring the plant height 14 days after or two weeks. And it's a two-week interval. So, after two weeks, that is also the time you also need to measure again. And days to, uh, to maturity, this will be determined using appropriate maturity index of a particular crop. So, that would be part of your assignment because the first part of the methodolo methodology is you need to do web research. And biological yield, this will be determined using two representative sample yields per treatment. And for economic yield, only the part of the plant of economic value will be measured. So the grains, the mature pods, the tubers, or the seeds. So in your data gathering, because as I've mentioned, you are to assign 10 seeds per experimental plot. So only choose randomly 5 sample data plants in each plot. So students, if you still have more questions, feel free to comment down below or you can contact me through my institutional email provided in your screen. So thank you very much for watching this video and I hope this might help you especially in answering your laboratory exercise as well as understanding deeply about Crop Science 41. So stay tuned and wait for more videos to be uploaded especially in, other, in our other exercise. So thank you very much and have a great day.